sometimes we think about the ways of God, his righteousness, his justice, how he will vindicate the poor and the needy within his own people, how he demands fairness in judicial procedures. You know, he demands that and he's against unrighteousness. It could take our breath away. And then we think about the fact that he might use, for instance, a larger empire like the Assyrians, very ungodly empire. He uses them as agents of judgment against his own people, the leaders of his own people. But then later, after he's finished administering discipline to his own people, he'll come back in, in anger against the rod that he used, the you know, the instrument that he used against his own people. So he can judge the Assyrian Empire too and the Babylonian Empire, any empire among men. And, and all of this just kind of takes our breath away. Just realize the holiness and righteousness of Almighty God. And to think that there's any way out for us at all, it's, it's just a marvelous mercy. And that way out comes in the person of the Son of God, who is perfectly righteous, who loves the widow and the orphan. Let's take a look at, at this story of God's righteousness and his judgment from Isaiah 10. It says, Woe to those who decree iniquitous decrees. What do you mean? What, what are these bad decrees? Uh, and the writers who keep writing oppression. These are people who write laws, who enforce laws, laws that are unjust, laws that are against the poor and the needy, right? against widows and orphans because they don't seem to have power. So some people are taking advantage of them. Does this mean that God insists that everyone have exactly the same amount of wealth? No, no, no. That's a concept that's foreign from what we see in the scriptures. What he is saying is that everyone should be treated fairly within the system of justice in a society. That justice should not be based on how wealthy you are, how well connected you are, what kind of power you have, who you have defending you. No, justice should be based on the law and the facts and we should all stand equal before the Lord whether rich or poor, yet equal before the Lord and his, and his law. And when that's not happening, God is angry. And he will use others to judge his people. He'll even use an ungodly nation like the Assyrians. Assyrian, he, he calls the Assyria, Assyrian Empire the rod of my anger. You get it? That God's the one who has the rod in his hand. He's using it against his own people and against the leaders of his people that are abusing the poor. He, he's a staff in, in, in uh, a, 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 you know, like a, like a stick uh, in, in their hands. It, it's, it's my fury, he said. See, God is exercising his own judgment, his own fury against his people. He, he uses the Assyrians. But, he says in Isaiah 10, when the Lord has finished all his work on Mount Zion and on Jerusalem... He will punish the speech of the arrogant heart of the king of Assyria. So he won't put up with arrogance among the ones that he chose to use as discipline against his own people. Do you get this? You know, it's a little complicated, but see, this is what happens. It, that God will, he, he'll judge everybody. Do you understand? And who will stand when God judges so righteously, right? But... He tells us that a remnant, a small portion from his people, a remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob to the mighty God. For though your people Israel be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will return. How will there be a remnant when God is, is such a wonderful God of justice and we're unrighteous? It's got to be a remnant by mercy. Now, we know this from other passages, you know. A remnant will return. That remnant will be found in Jesus Christ, who is himself 
the great ruler over his people. He will be righteous and true and, and merciful, stepping in front of the wrath of God that was coming against us and turning that wrath away so that we might be a remnant that receive his mercy. Thank you, Father, for your merciful grace shown to us so wonderfully in the person of your Son, Jesus Christ. He is our hope. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, friends.